Now, is there any more reliable brand in uh, in film production at the moment than Ardman? I mean, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? You just think oh, you see you see you see anything to do with Ardman, you just think, okay, fine, we, we, we're we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Definitely. I mean, I, it always makes me think of Creature Comforts. So, like, you know, I've got that nostalgia. I think the thing with Ardman is especially in this time, it's a tumultuous time to be alive, it just makes you go, oh, maybe everything's I know, maybe fine. everything is going to be all right. So, um, Sean the Sheep uh, Farm again, uh, which is, what I mean, I have to say, I have got to the point with, uh, you know, with uh, certain animations, I, I want them to be absolutely brilliant. And then when they are, it just delights me. And I can tell you, there's no suspense in this talk. I can tell you, I started smiling in the first 10 seconds of Shaun the Sheep. And then I giggled and chuckled and guffawed and beamed my way through the whole movie. And... And it's you know as you said it's a it's a movie that clearly will play to a to, to a younger audience but I am about as old as it is possible to as old as tired old as and cynical as it is possible to get and I just absolutely loved it. So the story is uh, at the very very beginning there is I mean it kind of this takes uh, riffs as with all these productions they take riffs from E. T. in two thousand and one and X Files and a little bit of Jaws as well. So um, essentially. A very, very cuddly blue alien is uh, stranded on Earth uh, as a result of uh, UFO visitation and needs to needs to be taken in and looked after. And so it falls to Sean and the rest of the, the crew from uh, Mossy Bottom Farm to do that, to, to look after him and ultimately to, to, to help the alien get back home. Meanwhile, the farmer has realised that M Mossy Bottom has become a tourist trap as a result of UFO sightings, and so has decided to cash in on the uh, on the UFO craze by building this kind of theme park that will net him, you know, obviously millions, and enable him to buy a spanking new tractor. That's basically it, as far as the plot's concerned. And the, the joy of it is, as before, it's no words, it's just sounds. We're going to do a strange thing. We did this before. I'm going to play you a clip. Great. From a, a wordless, but you know, obviously noises from uh, Sean the Sheep movie Farmageddon. Oh, Lola! <laughs> now the, the, the point is okay almost anything could have been happened. I like that so the, the first thing is i mean i love the fact that uh, the movie looks like it's been made with care and attention and love and we were just talking before about maleficent mistress of evil which is a film which looked to me like a production line mechanical job it was and i use this this uh, word advisedly it was it felt soulless it felt like a machine nothing about sean the sheep farmageddon feels like a machine the tale of two colons if <laughs> You know, Ed Wood would have actually made that movie. It it just it just feels like something which, you know, you can feel the love and the attention that's gone into it. That's the first thing. Second thing is, as somebody who is an absolute, you know, advocate and lover of silent cinema, I love the idea that in the in the modern age you can make a film that essentially uses the universal language of cinema. Um one of the things I've quoted this before, one of the things that Mike Figgis said was that when Immigrants used to arrive in America. The first thing that would happen, they would come to Ellis Island. They would be shown a silent film of life in New York. And that film would explain to them visually how the world that they were about to enter worked. And then sound came along and film became language specific. But there is a universal language of film, which is you know beyond the use of words. And I think that what's happening with 
this is throwing back to that. I mean, it's not silent. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of sound effects. There's music. There's all the rest of it. But silent in as much as wordless. And I, I love that. And they, it has a classic sense of slapstick, which I think is one of the highest art forms. I was saying the other day, if I understood dance, I think I, th I think I would think it was the greatest of all art forms. I don't because I'm, I just don't get it in the way that I ought to. Sure. But there is something about dance, singing in the rain, singing, something about dance which I think is sublime. And there is something about slapstick for me, which is just great. And I watched this and I just thought, this this is universal cinema made flesh. Anybody could watch this. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old or, you know, cynical or optimistic. It doesn't make any difference. You watch it, you, the characters, everything you need to know about them is there through gesture, is there through um, those sort of strange little expressions. The, the, the film is fantastically cine literate. It's making all these gags about it, but the gags aren't winking at you. They're right. not kind of like, oh, look, we stuck that in, we stuck that Here's in. Here's one for the mums and dads. They're made, yeah. The gags are in there because the people that made the film absolutely love the medium that they're working in. And I struggle to remember the last time that I saw a film that just felt so perfectly good-hearted and thrilled about the cinematic medium. And I would also say, stay to the end, okay. because with so many things, you know, there's a thing at the end. Yeah, yeah. There is a thing at the end of Farmageddon that is worth staying for and put a little spring in my step because it was such a lovely little gag that it made me laugh all the way up Dean Street and huh. all the way across Oxford, Oxford Road. That's how funny it was. Oxford Road. All the, you walked all the way from, from London to Manchester. Oxford Street, sorry. Yeah, sorry that my Manchester head went on there. I, I, I was just thinking about it. Is it Oxford Street or Oxford Street? Yes, it's Oxford Street. Well done, yes.